Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will unbox, mount, and test this Thermalrite EXP120-X67. In case you are new to the EXP series, the 120 means that it has a 120mm fan and the 67 means that the height of the cooler is 67mm. So I bought this for 2,400 pesos or around 45 US dollars which is for me is very cheap. Anyway, the box that I got is not colored which is fine. I just noticed it. Around the box it has specs which is nice. The height of the heatsink is 52mm without fan. It has 6 heat pipes and the thermal capacity is 165 watts. Anyway, opening the box. Upon opening, you'd see the accessory kit. Underneath is a manual which is important. Warranty information, the fan itself, another foam padding, and the actual heat sink. Nothing more. So the fan is a 120mm slim fan. As for the accessories, let's open it. There's a bunch of accessories. Okay, let's see. They're off a good start with a resealable plastic. So it has standoffs for LGA 11.5X and LGA 1700. It also has standoffs for AM4 slash AM5. So do note that this is AM5 compatible. And these are the mounting screws for the Intel. Mounting brackets and thermal paste. So as for the mounting brackets, it has for AM4 and Intel. So for their Intel mounting bracket, it seems that it is compatible with LGA 11.5X and LGA 1700. You can verify it in the manual. Yep, verified. So it has a specific mounting for LGA 1700. Fan clips. One of these is for slim fans and one of these is for 25mm fans. Then back plate for LGA 11.5x, 1200 and 1700. So as for this video, I'll be testing the AM4 mounting. So let's skip the LGA ones. I'm not sure which fan clips to use. Uh, try this one. Okay, it seems that it's this one. As for mounting, I'll be testing it with the usual B550i Iorus Pro AX, Ryzen 7 5800X. But as for the RAM, I'm not sure yet which one is compatible. So I'll try the non-RGB and the RGB version. Let's try the RGB first since we want some color to this build. So my initial problem with this cooler is that there's no compatibility guide for RAM. So I'm not sure if it is compatible with any RAM or it has some limitations with the RAM height. So I'll try the 42mm first. So again, triangle here, triangle there. So let's just try this. Okay, seems that it will not have issues with the RAM, it's just right. However, if you have a taller RAM, such as the Corsair Dominator or the Trident Z Neo from G-Skill, then it might not fit. Anyway, let's try to mount this now. So based on the figures here, the RAM is already installed and the CPU should be already installed. So we have to remove the plastic brackets first. Again, don't drink coffee when you are building a PC. So there are some standoffs. This is symmetrical, I'm not sure. Okay, based on the manual, it, the arc should be facing the processor. So it will be like this. It can also be like this, but we'll hit the RAM. So I think I'll be doing it like this. So first, let's put in a thermal paste. So this thermal paste is the gluey thermal paste. Based on the ones I've seen online, should do something like this. Nine dots. Nine dots, not nine dash. Then let's remove the pin. So we should align the screw here and this thing here. I don't know what do you call this thing here. <laughs> Line it line it once it's aligned there's a screw here that you can turn perform three turns at a time verify if it's connected oh it's not connected so if it's not connected uh, remove it means that the mounting pressure is already in balance so tighten it one two three look at it it's connected okay both are connected then three turns at a time looks tight enough you can also see the excess thermal paste there okay looks good enough so as for the fan clips it seems that i have to stall it first so like this then like this then pull it down pull it down okay okay that was easy but what's left is the performance this looks promising to be honest so i hope it performs okay 
Okay, time to test this. Okay, as for the temps, I tested FF15 benchmark for 30 minutes and it performed well in its default config which is 15mm slim fan intake. It also performs similarly on 15mm slim fan exhaust, 25mm Noctua fan intake, and 25mm Noctua fan exhaust. In all configs, the average is at 60 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 74 to 76 degrees Celsius. I also tested it using a theoretically hotter Intel i7-10700K. In default config, it was performing well at an average of 56.76 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 75 degrees Celsius. As for Cinebench scores, there is an outlier score of 13,881, but this is likely due to other running processes in the background. I also checked the average core clocks, compared it to non-outliers, and it looks as expected. So overall, AXP120-X67 performs similarly to the Alpen from Blackridge in performance mode. AXP120 is more tolerable at RAM height of 42mm rather than 34mm, but AXP120 has no compatibility guide for the RAM which is very important for planning a build. The manual of AXP120, although not explicit, is much clearer that you have to install the RAM and it tells you to remove the original plastic clips for AM4. I also like the mount for AM4 as you don't need to flip the motherboard upside down. It is also cheaper for half the price. However, it is not compatible with any SFF cases that I've reviewed so far. Also beware of the slim exhaust config as it is very loud that you can hear it from 3 meters away. Anyway, I'm okay to recommend this cooler provided that it can fit your case. The default 15mm fan included is good enough for this cooler as well and you don't need to upgrade to a Noctua fan. Alpen phone is still the best low profile cooler as it is compatible with most cases that I've tested. Okay so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!